All right, so we are out here today swinging some flies uh, for some steelhead on the Salmon River. Uh, one of the things I always tell people when they first get into swinging flies here is you don't have to pull off a ton of, a ton of line and bomb a huge cast off the bat. Uh, I always start out relatively close to me and then kind of work my way out to cover the water because you never know if fish of a lifetime could be you know, right out in front of you. So swinging flies definitely covers the water in an effective manner. Uh, we are swinging today and looking for that aggressive steelhead that's you know coming to the river. Um, it's not necessarily going to catch you the most fish, but it's it's definitely look, targeting those aggressive fish. Um, you know, fishing for with eggs, you know, under egg, egg flies under an indicator. Uh, or you know, conventional fishing with floats, it's definitely probably gonna catch you more fish. My personal opinion is the take on a swung fly is super aggressive. The fish is gonna be ripping line off your reel, sometimes even jumping before you even have a chance to set the hook. You don't even really need to set the hook on the fish a lot of the times. Uh, I just find it the most exciting way to fish for steelhead. So early fall is a great time to uh, target these fish on the swing. <clears throat> uh, king salmon and coho salmon are pretty much finished in this river. Uh, you might have a few hanging around the top end of the river, but uh, the steelhead are kind of off of the eggs that they initially came in here for. So this time of the year is a great time to get their you know, predatory instinct to eat something that looks uh, like a bait fish, which a swung fly imitation uh, imitates, as well as you know smaller insects swimming in the current. So when you're out here swinging flies and covering water like this, um, it's definitely a different uh, hook set on the fish. And by that I mean, if you set the hook as soon as you feel a fish grab your fly you are probably eight out of 10 times gonna miss that fish. Uh, you want that fish to grab, be, you know, sometimes pulling line off the reel and feeling the, the weight of that fish before you wanna set the hook. Um, you set up like this, you're probably gonna miss the fish. Uh, you always wanna set as that fish is grabbing, you wanna set towards the bank and low. Your hookup rate will be a lot, a lot more consistent uh, doing that as opposed to just immediately lifting the rod up as soon as uh, you feel that fish grab. And remember, this isn't dry fly fishing where you got to lift the rod, rod up. Um, the natural instinct of that fish is to grab that fly, and then they're going to turn and go back to where they were, or turn and go a different way in the, uh, the river. And that turn is nine times out of 10 gonna set that hook almost automatically into the corner of their mouth or top of their mouth, wherever you know, they happen to grab, grab the fly. So sometimes it is a little more difficult uh, to find water to swing flies uh, on busier rivers, like the Salmon River in particular. Um, you know, some other rivers in the Great Lakes are pretty popular, get a good amount of uh, congestion on the river. Um, so sometimes you really gotta have that patient mindset. Sometimes you need to walk a little bit further to find a piece of water that you'll be able to swing flies. Um, for the most part, uh, we're down here on the DSR. Um, everybody's pretty sportsmanlike down here and we'll give you plenty of room if you are swinging flies. There is a, uh, solid group of uh, spay fishermen on the Salmon River and Great Lakes in particular um, that have adopted the two-handed approach and swinging flies um, to catch steelhead. It's been a wildly popular way of fishing um, out west in the Pacific Northwest, Northern California, Oregon, Washington, BC, Alaska. Um, the bigger rods allow you to cover more water 
Um, if you're fishing, you know, the Salmon River is a good river to swing flies. If you're over fishing the Grand River, Toronto, that's a massive, massive river. So the two-hand approach, I mean, swinging flies is effective for not only steelhead, but you can do this for trout, you can do this for smallmouth bass, you can do it for uh, stripers in the ocean. Um, you can really refine your casting and technique and uh, the style of fishing for multi, multi species, uh, which will eventually translate into, you know, better steelhead fishing when you catch one of these tricky, tricky fish uh, on the swing. Day two, out here steelhead fishing today. Got a little more favorable weather. A uh, little rain came in and bumped the water up, which is good. Uh, we're out here again fishing the 11 foot 4 inch 7 weight sky switch rod. Uh, fishing a marabou spay, swinging flies, and hopefully getting a steelhead to take. All right, so once again, we're going to start short here, swing this inside part. Uh, there could be, you know, steelhead laying right here on the inside edge. Uh, we're not going to, you know, just start bombing casts out here. We want to cover this water progressively and then we'll start making our way down the run. So after each cast, I'm pull, you know, one or two strips off my line, maybe a foot or so. We're going to make another cast and just keep covering that water. I just saw a fish dart. <laughs> Probably just spooked one. All right, so we have much better conditions today on the river. Uh, we're fishing the Douglas and Salmon Run on the Salmon River here, the lower end of it. A little more overcast skies. We had a bunch of rain yesterday, so it bumped the water up, added a little bit of color to it, which is nice, uh, especially for swinging flies. We don't want those fish to have a real long time to look at our fly. We just want them to uh, smash it and take off running, because so that's what we're looking for. Uh, so I have a marabou spay on. I always do really well on this river with those. Uh, I'm kind of fishing a black, pink, and chartreuse combination. Uh, seems to do really well, especially for steelhead that are fresh into the river here from the lake, uh, which the area of the river we're fishing are is about as fresh as they can they can be. So yeah, we're just going to keep making our way, making a little bit longer casts, pulling a little more line off. And then we're eventually going to make our way down this run. So sometimes a little bump in water, a little bit of change in clarity of the water is all you really need to turn things around steelhead fishing. You can get those fish a little bit uh, more active. They feel a little more protected in the water from, uh, from predators and things like that. So they kind of hunker down and feel a little safer. Uh, which is what we want. We don't want spooky fish. So we've been fishing this run for a little bit. Covering it in close and now working the far side there. Uh, starting off with a brighter fly today. I'm going to swing through here. We'll give it a little rest and if it doesn't work then, you know, to maybe change up colors. Uh, I like starting with flies that I have confidence in. And I have confidence in this fly. I've caught several fish on it before, uh, especially towards the lower end of the river here. They seem to like the brighter colors. So another thing I like to do um, while fishing runs, you know, multiple times, uh, besides changing flies, uh, a lot of times I'll change the speed I'm swinging the fly. So I normally like to start off uh, with a slower swing, I'll make a big mend into this. Let that fly sink. It's gonna to come to the depth I want it to with my sink tip. And then it'll start to swing through that, that pool there. Sometimes I like to change that up and I'll actually, instead of mending to let it go down, I'll mend it down river to actually speed that fly up. Uh, sometimes that will wake up, you know, kind of dormant fish. It'll agitate them frankly kind of piss them off and that might wake up a fish to uh, attack your fly so this this time here I'm gonna make a mend downstream and just kind of swing this fly through really quickly to so make the same cast I'm gonna mend that downstream 
Now it's going to swing through really quickly. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, it's swinging flies for steelhead. You're not, the odds are not always in your favor. But when you do get a fish, it is 100% worth it. Another little tip I have is when you're swinging flies like this and doing spay casts, uh, you always want to fish or cast away from the wind. Uh, so we have an up, upstream wind coming at me. So I want to cast off of my far shoulder here, this sh shoulder that's uh, upriver. Main reason for that is if the wind picks that cast up, it's going to fly out. It's not going to hit me. If I was casting off this shoulder, my line would be coming this way. That wind picks up, it's gonna blow right back into me. I've hit myself before, popped hats off my head, hit my sunglasses. Uh, you just gotta be careful, so always cast away from the wind. And always have a good bourbon or scotch with you. <laughs> Sometimes you need to bless the river before you can get a fish. Well, we spent another good day here swinging flies for steelhead. We were uh, lucky enough to get one grab. Unfortunately, the fish came off, but that's steelheading. Uh, hopefully the next time out, we'll, we'll get that fish we're looking for.